I never asked you how to pronounce your last name, but I'm going to take a stab at it. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it live. We, we, we do this live at B-Sides Knoxville. Ben Sadegapur? Oh, you got it. Hell yeah. Sadegapur? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Ben is presenting for us. Uh, and if you don't know, our, our tradition for keynote speakers, we don't, we don't pick the keynote speakers. Last year's keynote speaker picks this year's keynote speaker. So Ben will get to pick next year's keynote speaker. So I don't have to do it. <laughs> Much easier that way. All, all the best keynote speakers know each other. This is common knowledge. All right, so without further ado, uh, Ben is presenting, would I even be here if it wasn't for the internet? All right, anyone hear me okay? Yeah. Well, I lost my clicker somewhere, but I'll look for it. Um, before I get started, I wanted to say, oh, you had it. You stole it from me. <laughs> Thank you. Turn this off. All right. Um, before I get started, I wanted to thank all the organizers. Uh, also, Sam, who was a previous keynote speaker for B-Size Knoxville last year, who um, got me nominated to this year's keynote. Um, also, a big thank you for all of you guys for taking your Friday afternoon to be here and listen to me ramble about bug bounties. Uh, throughout the talks, uh, throughout the slides that I'm going to present, I want to pretty much tell a story about a ton of people, amazing people in the hacking community with a specific focus on bug bounties where most of my work has been done. And I want to tell a story of things that they have accomplished. Um, and if any of us would have been here if it wasn't for the internet giving us internet points and money for doing what we do. Um, before I get started, I want to make sure that um, I clear up that I'm not saying bug bounties were the reason why these people were successful. They all put in a ton of effort, lots of you know, one night, uh, you know, staying up all night and getting things done in order to get here. Uh, so I want to make sure I clear that up. A lot of these people have done amazing work on their own. Bug bounties was just an avenue uh, for a lot of them, including myself, uh, to get to where they're at, they're at today. All right, everyone ready? All right. Uh, so a little about me, uh, I'm Ben Sadegapur. Most people know me online as Nahamsek. I currently work as the VP of Research and Security for a startup called Hadrian. We work on red teaming and attack surface management. Uh, before that, I worked at a company called HackerOne. Some of you may be familiar with them. Uh, we worked with bug bounties. I worked as the head of hacker education where I created content for hackers to learn how to break into uh, bug bounties and hacking. I've also hacked into a number of companies like Apple, uh, Airbnb, Snapchat, um, Red Bull, Department of Defense. But we'll talk about my story a little bit towards the end of the uh, presentation. All right, but before I talk about any of that stuff, I kind of want to talk about how I learned about bug bounties. Before I even knew about hacking, I knew about hacking when I was a kid, but I didn't realize how big of a community was out there for hacking and bug bounties. Um, I literally had no clue what I wanted to do in life. Uh, I went to school. I was doing computer science at uh, Sacramento State University. If you're familiar with this school, I'm sorry. If you're not, good for you. It's not a good school, really, for computer science, at least. Um, for criminal justice, great, but don't go there for computer science. Uh, but yeah, I was you know, walking down the halls. I didn't want to graduate, really. I had no plans for the future. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, what was I going to do with this shiny piece of paper that cost me, you know, eight, six, five thousand dollars a semester? Um, that I didn't really learn anything that I was passionate about. Um, and to be honest, formal education wasn't something that I really cared for. Uh, I didn't see the point of going in and turning in papers. Uh, I, I, there's a class that's required by Sac State that's uh, it's game intro, mobile game dev intro, whatever you want to call it, with Java. And I failed that class twice until I was able to pass it the third time. And then because of that, I was put on probation. So school was definitely something that I wanted to do. Um, what's funny is I was actually skipping class to go to the library and learn how to hack. Or I was going to class, opening up my laptop, acting like I'm taking notes so I can hack more and uh, learn for you know, whatever I was trying to get into. And if it wasn't for YouTube, I would have been able to pass a lot of my courses. A uh, big one is Calc 1. I took Calc 1 three times. The first two times I failed because the, the teacher would have random quizzes. And when you're not going to class, those quizzes add up when you miss like 90% of them. That's like 
you know, 20% of your grade. So I found the one teacher that was nice enough to tell us every Friday you have a quiz. So I would show up on Fridays for 15 minutes and the two nights before I would go on YouTube and practice whatever I knew was gonna be on that test. I would copy people's notes, learn them, and go on YouTube and practice and do my homework and show up to class and I finally got a B somehow thanks to YouTube and passed. And I did that with Calc 2 and Calc 3. It was the same teacher. We had a gentleman's agreement. I show up on Friday, I show up to your test, you leave me alone, I pass. And he, he agreed. He was okay with it. Um, eventually, I got enrolled. Uh, our, com our school started doing this cute program called cybersecurity. They're still using Backtrack. So if you're familiar with Kali Linux, used to be Backtrack. They still call it Backtrack at my school, by the way. It's really that, that outdated. Uh, but they were doing these one some month meetups where it was about, they would call it Crypto Night. I don't know why, but um, they brought up people from the, the federal people that wanted to recruit. And somebody in that group told me like, hey, there is something called bug bounties, which brings me up to my uh, trillion dollar question. I'm uh, gonna give you guys a trillion dollars from Zimbabwe if anyone knows what bug bounties are. Yep, uh, so I have a, literally a trillion dollar for you. Whenever I'm done, you wanna come and grab it. It's legit, by the way, it's not a joke. It's actually a, it's worth 200 bucks, apparently. Uh, but yeah, bug bounties are pretty much where you find a vulnerability from a company, like the ones that I mentioned, they have a bug bounty program, they tell you the rules, you submit to them, you get paid. Just out of curiosity, anybody here participate in bug bounties, ever submitted anything? Okay, a few people, any of you, um, Part of a bug bounty program, like managing it. Okay, handful of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so it wasn't just uh, the YouTube. So I talked about YouTube and the reason why I graduated, but it wasn't just YouTube. I also learned about bug bounties. There are people that are making money, and I was on my super duper senior year. It was like my second wrap around the senior year that I was doing, and I heard about bug bounties, and I really wanted to get out. It was either I say screw all this money that I've spent on school. You know, it's thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars you've spent on school, and I drop out and don't get a piece of paper, or I just suck it up and go to school for another two, three semesters, really focus on learning whatever it is, seize, do, get degrees, get the degree, have the paper, and put it on my desk and go get a full-time job. And I did that. I uh, went and did exactly that. I learned about bug bounties, but I realized a lot of the companies that you want to interview for, they want you to have a degree or a million years of experience out of college. So the you know having the CS degree is what kind of helped me. But the bug bounty thing was great because they were going to pay me if I find something on my free time. I don't have a boss, I don't have to report to anybody. And I sat there, I was like, hey, I can do that. I can, I can probably hack into a company or two and make some money and learn while I'm at it. It was a legit business. I saw a lot of people that were making a lot of good money. Uh, Yahoo was, uh, this is post, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Yahoo's bug bounty program. They, they were giving away like $20 gift cards at some point and then the internet like went after them, canceled their bug bounty program and then they started paying like a lot of money at this point. Uh, so I really entered the bug bounty phase at a very uh, early age as people were starting to pay more and more. And honestly, it changed everything. Uh, first of all, I'm not here to sell you on bug bounties. I'm not trying to tell you to go do bug bounty or your company should do a bug bounty, anything like that. It's just, it really changed my life. It really helped me do things that I didn't think I would do. It pushed me to the one of wanting to get out of school. For someone who didn't care about school, it pushed me to want to get things done and move forward with my life. And it wasn't just my life that changed. Um, it, it changed a lot of the, other people's lives. The thing with bug bounty is it's very global. Anybody in the world could participate. So it only really changed my life. It changed uh, a lot of people's lives, including myself and a ton of other people that I have their photos on here. Uh, this is about 100 people that I could find on the leaderboard of HackerOne. I'm gonna talk about some of these in a little bit, but a lot of people across the world, there's people from India, Pakistan, there's people in Sweden. Uh, there's people in South Africa, there's people in, you name it, any country you can think of um, that are in there. I think with the stats that I got from HackerOne, it's about 180 plus countries that people are participating in bug bounties. The only way you can do bug bounties is if it's, you're one of those popular countries where they're sanctioned by the US. So North Korea, uh, one of the countries I'm from, Syria, and a uh, couple other handful. But everybody else could participate, get paid. All you have to do is give them your tax information. And Throughout 
the, the scene that I've seen people come into bug bounties, we have different paths, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, but this is just a small percent of people that are in the bug bounties. This is not everybody. This is not every single platform. It's just a hundred or so people that I have found that they were on the leaderboard at the time of making the slide itself. And someone should mix the NFT, by the way. I think it'll be a good one. And also the cool thing about bug bounty is nobody cares about your background. Nobody cares if you have a bachelor's degree. No one cares if you are just learning. If you don't know anything, you know everything. Nobody cares. Honestly, no one cares. Everyone could get involved. It's open to everybody. So let's talk about some of these stories. Before we talk about them, there's a number of profiles that I want to talk about. And each profile will tell a story about some of those people that fit that profile. Um, it's really important to understand why people do bug bounty. It's not all about money. You know, I know that money is a big driver for a lot of stuff, especially with bug bounty. A lot of people do it because it looks like this cool thing that you can make money, you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars within a few hours, within a few, uh, few days or a few months. But there is different reasons also people hack with bug bounties. And again, I'm gonna say this one last time. I'll promise I'll move on from it. It really doesn't matter what your background is. Some of the people that I'm gonna talk about come from a digital marketing. Uh, advertisement, uh, people that were developers, people that were IT folks that were working on the IT team. So it doesn't matter what you have done. The cool thing with this is that you can learn and also uh, earn as you go. So let's talk about these uh, for the next few minutes. I just wanna, if you guys see people that you, seem interesting to you, the handles are gonna be the first thing that come up. Uh, look, up them on, look them up on Twitter. A lot of them are very active. They still share some of their stories. They share some of their trips, uh, tricks about hacking, how they have gotten uh, started. Uh, some really cool hacking tips and things I've gone really good at. So the first one that I want to talk about is the full-timer. The full-timer is, the mo main objective is, obviously they want to make money, that's the first one that I talked about. They want to pay for their bills. And there's uh, cases of people that have made hundreds of thousands of dollars, and we also have people that have made millions. Uh, I think the last number I got was uh, one of the hackers, his name is Eric, today is new. Uh, dude has a scanner in VB6, and he has made $3 million with this, this thing that he has written from technology from 20 years ago. Uh, he's very open about it. He says it himself, like, it's really old code that I've built. It's the only language that I'm good at, but it's made him $3 million on HackerOne alone. I think they just announced his uh, $3 million celebration thing. One of the first ones is Doggy G. Uh, he's one of my favorite people that I've talked to. He's based out of the U.S. Uh, on Twitter, if you type in Doggy G, he should come up, or it's D Doggy G maybe, uh, but he should be the only one with that name. He was actually a black hat. Uh, he went to prison and served a 13 year term for hacking multiple governments and companies in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, one of them was Yahoo, and he's also made a million dollars from hacking Yahoo legally now. Uh, prior to that, he was a chef. He had to go do something outside of computers because he was banned from using computers. And HackerOne has this program called HackerOne Elite where they pick five hackers every year. I think he was in the fourth year of the HackerOne Elite where he was given this poster that just says you've been a big part of the community. Whether it's being a part of the community, your contribution, your critical vulnerabilities, or you were consistent in what you were doing. Uh, he, like I said, he was a black hat. Uh, he started hacking Yahoo legally and when I met him and we talked a little bit, it's like, you know, funny thing is I went to prison for a company that's paying my bills now. If 13 years ago bug bounties were a thing, I wouldn't go to prison. I wouldn't have to you know, serve this you know, long sentence because I was just dumb and I was a young kid I wanted to hack. So it's very cool that he's you know, turned his life around and now he's a um, something OPSEC engineer or, full, uh, or a offensive security engineer at a company called Briggs. And to show some of his stats on the right, you guys are right, you can see he's, uh, Verizon Media has changed name like a million times in the past three years. They used to be Yahoo, they turned to Oath, and then they became Verizon Media, and now they're called Yahoo again. Um, but he was the number one hacker on their program. And these are all the uh, private, uh, sorry, public programs that you can see on his profile. So there's private ones that I can't show, but the public programs that he's hacked on, the US, US Department of Defense is a big one. Uh, he has also gone to prison, and a part of his uh, sentence was hacking the Department of Defense. And now he's one of the top hacking, uh, top ranking hackers on the Department of Defense, both on HackerOne, uh, Senac, uh, where they do most of their engagements. The next one is Mayonnaise. I call it Mayonnaise. It's based on a song, really old song. I don't know if you know the song. Uh, he said that's where he got his name from. He comes from uh, IT and data science. Uh, no security background at all. 
he just knows how to handle data. And if you know about uh, today's age, everything we do is data. Everyone's data is online. And uh, he used to build CRMs uh, for, you know, to make money uh, for college and pay for it. And then once he was uh, looking for new business ideas, he discovered bug bounties. He's like, oh, I, I can find data. I just have to find these paths and look for these different routes and they would spit out information. I know how to do that. I've built stuff on top of these APIs. I just gotta look for them and manipulate them to make money. Uh, within two years, he made a million dollars on HackerOne. Uh, and you can see within those two years, he was uh, number two on the Yahoo program. He's hacked PayPal, uh, Department of Defense, Shopify. And right now, I, don't, I think he's retired somewhere in, uh, on the East Coast hanging out. And keep in mind when I say Yahoo, the Yahoo program has been around for eight years. So for someone to come in in 2019, actually more than eight years now, uh, 12 years almost, 10, 11 years almost, and for someone to come in at 2019 and become a second place hacker after eight years of the program being around, it says a lot that you know, you, if you put in the time, you put in the effort, you can also make it happen. And making a million in two years, it's, it's incredible. Uh, Sam, also known as ZLZ, uh, he's, a very, he's very into uh, hacking crypto wallets right now, but before that, he was, uh, I met him when he was uh, 16, I wanna say 16, 15, 16. Uh, he was a freelance developer, uh, is what he called himself at 16, and he used to play video games, and uh, he didn't know it was called hacking, but he found ways of kicking people out of the game, trolling people's uh, accounts, and then he realized, oh, that is called hacking. I can hack games and make money from it. Uh, he became a uh, triage analyst at HackerOne for a few years. I think he was still 17 when uh, they employed him. He had companies like Apple, Tesla. He actually uh, got a really cool bug from Tesla, I think $15,000 because he bought a Tesla and he put a payload there while he bought it and it fired. Uh, and they paid him $15,000 and it was all over the news. Uh, he just started Palisade, it's his own uh, consultancy. Uh, he just started that last uh, year, year and a half after we sat down. I'm not a part of Palisade, but a lot of us that were a part of this research for Apple, they all made it into a consultancy firm now and they're doing pen tests for a lot of companies. So you may have seen some of these headlines, I think in 2020, uh, October, November of 2020, uh, when uh, a group of us hacked Apple, and we found like 50, 60 bugs on Apple's program. That number's a little bit outdated. It was about, it was close to $500,000 that was made between six of us. So it goes to show again, uh, he was still young. He's still young. I think he's barely 21 or 22 now. Uh, at 19 and making a big chunk of that, it's a lot of money. Um, and he just dropped out of college. and was like, nope, I'm not gonna make the same mistake as you. I'm gonna go work full time and make money. And it worked for him. It's also the academic type, like if, you know, not me, I don't consider myself one of those. I made that very clear, but there are people that are doing this just to get better. Their objective is to learn. They're either in school or they want to get certifications, uh, OSCP, OSWE, you know, Pentester Plus, whatever you know, we want to get. They also use bug bounties to do that. So they're still, again, unsure what they want to do. They're very interested in cybersecurity. Um, and if you think about it, if you are, I don't know, 18, 19, in college, not a lot of responsibilities. You have a lot of free time. You play a lot of video games more than likely. Uh, replace video games with bug bounties. Uh, and if you make $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month, which is very easily doable with bug bounties, that's a lot of money in college. Uh, you no longer have to survive on like ramen and you know, frozen food. You can literally pay for everything you want. And I know a lot of kids who have done that. And to be honest, a lot of these folks end up graduating from whatever the goal was. You know, they get their certification, they do it for one, two, three, four years, whatever it is. They learn, they become really good at hacking, and what we call is graduate from doing bug bounties, and they go get their first job at a company, uh, they become a consultant, or they, be, they start their own companies like Sam was doing, or a few others I'm gonna talk, talk about. So, uh, Jack Cable, anyone familiar with who Jack is? So he also was, very young when, he, we, we, uh, when I heard about him. He was, uh, I wanna say 16, when the Department of Defense launched their Hack the Air Force program. And he was, I think, the number one or number two hacker on that program. And later on, he got a job through the Department of Defense. He worked for um, one of the, uh, the Defense Digital Services, he worked for them. And then later on, just a couple of years ago, he was helping with the election security stuff. And his background was nothing with security, really. He just um, did development and knew how to code at a young age. He was a self-taught engineer. And then he heard about bug bounties at 15, 16, and he wanted to learn how to hack, 
at the Air Force, scored his job. I don't even think he touches bug bounties anymore. And because of all his work he has done, he also was accepted to Stanford. So he went to Stanford. I think he's already graduated at this point. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, and he's a prime example of someone who came from a really no security background. Again, he's, I understand he's younger, 16, 15, you have more time, but he put in the time and effort, and while he was going to school, he learned and learned and learned, and he ended up being one of the advisors on uh, the, all the election stuff that was happening. At DC, he is uh, another young hacker. I'm not sure how old he is. Uh, I've met him a few times, it's hard to tell, but he seems very young. Uh, his background is a little bit different. He was doing a lot of CTFs. He was playing CTFs to learn. Uh, a lot of CTFs like we do them here downstairs, I think uh, Security Code Warrior is doing one. Uh, every conference you go to, they do a CTF, and it's a really good place to get exposed to what you like to do in security and cybersecurity. Uh, especially the bigger ones when they have web, they have crypto, they have mobile. You get to play them and see, okay, maybe I like web over mobile. Maybe I like uh, mobile over something else. Um, he did this exact same thing, and he became really, really good at playing CTFs. He heard uh, about bug bounties through a CTF that HackerOne hosted, and he actually won that CTF, and they flew him out to one of the events. Uh, that I'll talk about those events a little bit. But uh, he said, I, I reached out to him because I was familiar with his story, and I asked him, like, hey, what's the story behind you and bug bounties? Like, he always talked about how much it's helped him. So he told me he didn't really rely on bug bounties to get a job or to like, use it for his resume, but it helped him understand all these technical things that they asked you during interviews better because he was actually on the offensive side now. He was finding these vulnerabilities, and when he was doing these uh, interviews, he was able to answer those questions better because he had a dev background already. He knew how to write secure code as much as he could, but he didn't know how to explain what an XSS was or what a SQL injection was. So he's finding them, learning them, and then now he's going to interview for uh, different jobs. And he's actually a security engineer for GitLab the last time I spoke to him. There's also what I want to call the careerist. Um, this objective is fully, and I've seen so many of these people that come through the bug bounty scene or even the pen testing scene, is that they just want to get a job doing something technical with pen testing, with offensive security. Uh, they just want to learn. They want to, they want to see where they fit in. So again, the, the main objective is to score a uh, job. They have all the necessary experience. They have read all these books. They have read these, you know, they have done all these different challenges. They have done CTFs. And they want to get past the HR. Maybe they don't have enough experience. And uh, I personally could talk about this, and I will in a little bit. I got past HR because of my background experience. So you may know how to use these tools, but you have nothing to showcase for it. It's great that you know how to use Burp Suite, uh, but can you show that you can find things with it? So we want to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, I posted this tweet, and uh, I asked for two things. One was, uh, is anybody doing full bug bounty hunting, which we already talked about a little bit. Those were the first profile that we talked about. And the second one is, has anyone gotten a job by doing this and putting uh, the bug bounty experience on their resume? So Jack Cable, not Jack Cable, sorry, Jack, I don't know his last name, Finite, he goes by. He uh, found a really cool stored XSS on Facebook. And uh, he reported, did a write-up. The write-up was amazing. And three months later, he was hired by Facebook. He worked for them for four years, and he moved on to another uh, consultancy, big consultancy place to work for. But he purely got that job because he hacked on the Facebook bug bounty program. And that last report that he sent him really got him a job. He got him in front of the people that mattered and could have hired, had the hiring power to get him on the, uh, the team. Uh, next one is Shubbs. We will talk about him a little bit more in a little bit. But he got his first job, I want to say, at Bishop Fox. Uh, by putting some of his bug bounty stuff on his resume, and he used some of the money to travel the world. Uh, Ar Arbarton, he was a student in, uh, I want to say, Australia, Sydney. He got his first gig from, uh, even though he was a student at the time, he scored a job becoming a pentest on a student visa in Australia somewhere, and he was able to help his family. Tom, he's a great developer. Some of his tools that he's put out for offensive security are great. He also has uh, gotten three jobs in the past like seven years. He has gone from company to company because he made so many great tools for hackers and also his experience with bug bounties as well. Random Robbie, if you're a developer, you've probably seen him in your S3 buckets at some point. He like wrote to every S3 bucket at some point in his life, uh, everyone that was vulnerable, and because of that, he landed another job, and I think he's also at Bishop Fox as well. Uh, this is a cool one. This is not the person that got the job, but. One of their number one hackers, uh, their, their number one hacker on their program, they reached out to him for an interview. They hired him, and he's hired at mail.ru because he was just killing it on their bug bounty program. And he probably knew more about their platform than the engineers knew because of how much they stared at it. Uh, so another example of people 
and I've scored a job um, by just doing bug bounties. Then Alyssa also did the Hack the Pentagon a lot. Uh, she currently also works as a defensive security engineer. Same thing. If, I just wanted to you know, put some of these up. There is a bunch of them. Vimeo, the number one hacker on their program, still is, but is not hired by them. Uh, Douglas Day, same thing, ranked hacker in their program. Now he works for them. Uh, ben Hield, same thing. He's gotten CVs from Bug Bounties to put them on his resume. You guys get the point. I don't need more screenshots. But yeah, there's a lot of people that have done this. Um, it just shows that you can leverage your experience. If you find a few vulnerabilities, who wouldn't want to say, hey, I've hacked the Department of Defense. You know, I've gotten a shell in the Department of Defense. Put it on your resume. I think a lot of engineers or a lot of hiring people will see that as a good experience versus having actual work experience that you haven't gotten in the past uh, four or five years. Uh, some of the favorite stories that I have, it's the same thing. Uh, some of the bug bounty hunters, uh, this handsome guy, his name is Peter Jaworski. Uh, he came into, he's also Hacker One Elite. He came into an event. So Hacker One hosts us events every year or every few months, at least we used to, the day used to, I'm no longer there, but they used to uh, host an event every few months in a random city. Um, they would fly everybody out to that city. Uh, they have done stuff in uh, Argentina, Singapore, uh, some stuff in Canada, uh, all across the US. Uh, and then we, they fly everybody and put them in a hotel, show them the city, and then they put them up uh, in this competition. Uh, they're doing one next week. And they, they pay up to, I think, the, the most they paid in three nights was uh, the last Vegas DEF CON event that they did. I want to say $2.8 million in a weekend was paid out to about 80 hackers. Uh, and he came out to one of them his first time at uh, H1415, which is in San Francisco. And he uh, met the Shopify team there. He hacked on Shopify. He met the Shopify team there. He had his first quote unquote screening at uh, the event. And then a few months later, he was hired by them. He just left Shopify not too long ago, and now he's working at Stripe. And he is uh, currently ranked number three hacker on the Airbnb program. Um, and you can see he is hacked on a bunch of other ones PayPal. Um, HackerOne itself, Vimeo, GitHub, Twitter, and Shopify, and Starbucks. Um, and he's also my favorite Canadian hacker. He's a very nice guy, and I will talk about him in a little bit more. His, there's another story that I want to talk about uh, that will come up in a bit. Next one is Joel, aka Techno Geek. Techno Geek. Uh, he's a very good mobile hacker, also HackerOne Elite. Uh, he has hacked companies like Shopify, Vimeo, PayPal, GitHub, Dropbox, you name it. He's hacked into it mostly from mobile. He also got his job because he came to H1702, which is the Vegas edition of HackerOne's event. And during H1702, he hacked on Uber, found a crazy mobile bug, and within the next few months, also hired at, uh, at Uber. And now uh, the cool thing is we found Droll while we hosted a CTF. And he, had, he was working at some random company doing mobile pen tests. Very junior kid, no experience really. Uh, he won our CTF. He was our first uh, person to solve. It was a mobile CTF. Came to the event, met them, and now he is. Uh, uh, he left Uber to work for Tinder, and he also openly has talked about this. He dropped out of school. He was going to uh, New York. Uh, he was going to school, and he was just like, too expensive. I'm already making money. I'd have a job offer. I have a full-time job offer that I can take. I don't want to go to school, and he made a decision to drop off and not continue his school. Uh, the next profile, this is my favorite one, is the Moonlighter. Um, the objective is that they want to learn and they want to earn. They already have a full-time job. They don't need to have another job, but they just do it for fun. They love hacking. They like the community. Uh, they have a lot of free time, maybe, and they want to do something with that free time, or they just purely want to make extra cash, double their salary, and I know a lot of guys who have done that. Uh, I have one example of this, Zayed. He used to be a red teamer. He just left his current gig to do something completely different. But he came in as a uh, QA analyst. Uh, he heard about bug bounties. And uh, throughout the QA thing that he was doing at work, he would do bug bounties at night. And before he left, he was the managing uh, person in, in charge of the red team for a big gaming company that's been all over the news with California recently. Uh, so he was managing an entire team for a while. And uh, he went up just because he was doing a lot of bug bounty stuff. He was learning how to automate things, how to do attack surface management stuff how to you know, do uh, hack into companies and leverage that to go up the ranks as well. He's also won the Uber badge for uh, DEF CON twice in a row. He's done it back to back, which if you're familiar with it, it's incredibly hard to get that. Uh, and also, he uh, loves creating puzzles. He's big on solving puzzles. Uh, he can't, I, he has solved one of the biggest content creators, mainstream content creators that most people know. He did a puzzle a couple of years ago and hackers hacked his puzzle 
he was maybe involved in some way, I'm not sure. But uh, from what I know, he's done a lot of uh, puzzles and some really big ones with Bitcoin. And you know, there's a lot of money involved and he's been the first to always um, get involved. This is actually a photo of him from uh, an event that HackerOne hosted in, I want to say, New York with the Department of Defense. That's one of the um, staff. Uh, he was one of the highest ranking people that was in charge of the DOD's security program, uh, shaking his hand, saying thank you for one of the craziest bugs I've ever seen. Um, he had access to some really, really crazy internal stuff that belonged to the Department of Defense. Um, and they were even shocked. They were like, this should have never happened. And he was the person that found it. And honestly, he's one of the best connections I've made. Not only we've become really good friends, but we've learned together, we have done a lot of crazy stuff together, and um, he's a prime example of someone who has done it all. He wanted to go up the ranks at work, he did it through bug bounties, he wanted to get better at his job, he did it with bug bounties, and he wanted to make money, and he, I think he was matching his salary uh, by moonlighting for uh, HackerOne and BugCrowd and making some money. But it doesn't just stop at hacking. I talked about a lot of hacking stuff. It's, a lot of it is with hacking. But there's also content creators who have came out of uh, this entire bug bounty scene. Uh, you may have seen this guy on YouTube a lot. His name is Stoke. I wish I could do the intro. He goes, hi, my name is Stoke. And he does this, you know, the peace sign thing in his videos. Uh, he came into another event. He social engineered his way into an event. Uh, and then uh, later on, he became a, a part-time bug bounty hunter. He also won one of the events at some point in New York, I want to say. Uh, he, creates con he used to create a lot of content with bug bounties. Now he works at a company called uh, TrueSec. He makes a lot of cybersecurity content with like red teaming for them. But a lot of his exposure came from his bug bounty stuff. He was putting out videos of how I made $15,000 in, in one day doing bug bounties. And it was just one single bug that he had found. And now he's, you know, he's got a lot of sponsorship opportunities from other companies like Hack the Box, Try Hacking, you name it. He works with them and makes content for them. Uh, and he's also used those information, used those bugs he has found to present at a number of different uh, conferences. Next one is Katie, Insider PhD. Uh, she does a lot of API hacking stuff. Uh, she also was a mentee at one of the events that HackerOne hosted. Uh, they bring out people that you know, are very new to the, uh, to the scene. They put them with a hacker, a top hacker in the scene. Uh, they learn everything from them. Uh, she came to a lot of the uh, life hacking events, but then ended up going down the path of making YouTube videos. And now she talks at a lot of uh, different conferences. She was, she was hired from Bug Crowd, by Bug Crowd. He, she just left the company not too long ago, which Bug Crowd is also one of those uh, bug bounty platforms. So it just shows, went to an event, learned some hacking, made some videos, put herself out there, and within a year or two, she was hired. She's very big in school. I think she has her PhD in computer science or something similar. Um, and now she's left and she's doing work on her own. I think she's teaching now at a university out in the UK. The last one is Farah. Uh, I'm not sure if you may have seen her on Instagram a lot. Uh, she's a content creator out of India. She started making content back in 2019, 2020. Uh, she started helping people on her Instagram. She talks about different resources on how you can get into cybersecurity, uh, hacking, tech, all that good stuff. And she talks at conferences. Uh, the, the story that I want to talk about with hers is, it's again, the content creating things. She was learning how to do uh, single sign-on hacking, for example. She wanted to learn how to do that. She would learn it, she would make a video on it, present it and put it on YouTube. And she has done that with a handful of them. And then not too long ago, Buckrat also hired her and she's now a manager for a triage team in her region within a couple of years. Uh, so another story to tell about people creating content. I don't think she does bug brownies or actively hacks on anything. But just to ask that she wanted to learn, she put her journey on YouTube for bug bounty hunters like herself, and she scored her job because she was so good at explaining things and communicating them to a non-technical audience. But it's not just YouTube content. Uh, there are people that are writing books. I know Joe's here, and I know Corey's here. They're doing books. Not really super related to bug bounties, but you guys remember this guy, Peter? So he uh, originally, before he started doing bug bounties full-time or part-time, whatever you want to call it, he put a book together, it was an ebook. All he was doing was uh, looking at HackerOne's activity. So HackerOne has a page called hackerone.com slash activity where every researcher or company can mutually agree whether or not they want to publish a bug that has been found. So he was looking at an, every single one of them and he was compiling them in a book and he was explaining how these bugs were found. Why was the reason why this bug worked? How did it work? What was the impact? And he put it into an ebook like this and people were buying him for 10 to $20, and then a few years later, he was a published author uh, for the book Real World Bug Hunting, A Field Guide to uh, Web Hacking. 
purely from bug bounties. I think the book still uses some of those reports from what I remember, but just to show, before he was a bug hunter, before he was hired by Shopify, he was doing this book uh, part-time and it, you know, it gave him a lot of opportunities because he was putting something really cool together and then later on it became this book. Uh, Vicky Lee uh, is another author. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with her. Her book is very good. I would really recommend it, if you're, especially to bug bounties if you're new to it. It's a great book to read, uh, both of those together. But she was also the same kind of concept. She was working as an AppSec engineer. She's a great blogger. If you go to her blog, uh, it's vickylee.medium.com. The way she explains technical things, it's incredible. I wish I could communicate the way she does in technical terms. Uh, but she started making security content on her site. She has some YouTube videos. And then later on, she also came out with this book, which covers a lot of the vulnerabilities that are very common in bug bounties. And also, you know, it's being, she's a published author with something related to bug bounties itself. There are also courses and trainings. There's a ton of them. Uh, this guy was a very smart uh, hacker who did a lot of cool stuff with his content. Uh, his name is Zishano. He's a hacker based out of the UK. He was uh, the top hacker on Buckcrap for a while until he got banned, unfortunately. Uh, he was very well known for hacking Amazon and TripAdvisor. And he also makes uh, content on YouTube. You can get, look him up at Zishano. Uh, he sat down one year and he wrote his entire methodology into a form of a book and he thought he could sell an ebook online on the internet without it getting leaked. Unfortunately, uh, being on the internet, everything gets leaked, including his book. But then he pivoted. He created this thing called the, uh, it's called bugbountyhunter.com, where he's created a fake infrastructure, and he personally asks you to find vulnerabilities, just like a bug bounty program. You write a report to him. In some cases, he pays you for those reports. They're fake vulnerabilities, not a real company. But he pays you for it and he tells you what to do to get your reports to be better. And he has, I want to say, he has created Bug Bounty Hunters, a dozen of them at least that I know of, because he has spent this time to do it with them. Uh, it's a one-time fee to get on his website, but it just goes to show a hacker who has hacked, you know, Verizon Media, uh, some gambling sites, Hyatt, Zendesk, Dropbox, PayPal, put it all on a website. He's just full-time doing this and investing his money in trading uh, cryptocurrencies right now and making more money. Just to goes to show he's taken that knowledge, put it on a website, created a resource for people, and people are, he's paying people to learn, and also they're taking that knowledge, taking it somewhere else and making money from it. Uh, there's also Udemy courses. There's hundreds of thousands of them. Uh, people have made tons of courses on bug bounties or web hacking. It's a big part of it. But again, it, there's another entire avenue of making money with this. There's startups that have been created by uh, bug bounty hunters, either by them or for bug bounty hunters. Uh, a great example is this guy that I talked about, Shab uh, Shabham Shah. He is the founder of a company called Asset Note, and I'll talk about it a little bit. He's also another hacker one elite. He is, and I don't know how this guy's brain, brain works, he knows how to rip a application or an infrastructure in a heartbeat. And he has made tons of money from it. I think he's close to a million. If he hasn't passed a million dollars, uh, he was doing it as a moonlighter at first before he founded his company. But he was doing it as uh, part-time. He was working full-time. And at nights, he wanted to get better. He had the time. And he was making a ton of money, uh, especially with United Airlines. Uh, they were giving out miles. And I want to say he had maybe 10 million miles at some point to the point that he was saying, I don't know what to do with these. Like, There's so many places I can fly first class that I can use all these miles. And I think he still has a ton of them and he still hacks them. But going back to his company, he uh, founded this company called Asset Note. The entire team is a bunch of bug bounty hunters. Uh, they have no VC funding backing them at all. Everything has been done by him and his team, I think, from what I understand. Um, and they pretty much have put their brains together especially shoves his brain into a methodology of how they find his different assets and how they automate to make money or actually find vulnerabilities for their customers. And then on the side, they use the same technology to scan all the bug bounty programs that are not their customers in hopes of becoming a customer, also making more money from it. Uh, so he was one of the first to you know, take his knowledge and take his money he has made and put it into a company and investing in himself. Uh, and hopefully they'll make something beautiful out of it. Geekboy, he's another hacker uh, out of India. He was, uh, he was an ex-hacker one triage member. He was also a hacker one elite. He has hack companies like Yelp, uh, Udemy, Rockstar Games, AT&T, a uh, bunch of other ones. But he just left hacker one one day. He's like, nope, I'm done. I want to start my own company. Not only I want to do it for the enterprise side, but I also want to do it for the community. So a lot of the tools that you may be familiar, uh, by a show of hands, anyone know the tool Nucle? 
few, okay. So Nuclear is one of the tools that a lot of the offensive security people use at fingerprints uh, every single asset that you scan. So if you find an asset, it tells you this is what it runs. They wrote that, they open sourced it, the entire community contributed to it. There are um, other tools like HTTPX, Subfinder, Nabu, DNSX, a ton of other things. And everything, again, is on GitHub. If you go to github.com slash uh, project discovery, I think, is their handle. Uh, everything is there, you can use them. They also created this platform, uh, projectdiscovery.io. I haven't seen it myself. It's, on, it's in demo right now. It's been in a demo for three years. But every day they release target listings for bug bounty hunters. So if, for example, Yahoo and Google are a bug bounty program, every single asset owned by Yahoo is indexed on uh, Chaos for free to download. And if you have an access to the API key, they give you more information. And I think they're hoping to go to enterprise route to get customers to onboard and sign their data. But wait, there's more. We're almost done, I promise. Uh, I talked a lot about you know, content creators. I talked about uh, Bug Bounty Hunter. I talked about Asset Node, every different avenue that people have made money. But I didn't want to leave it there as like this you know, glorified things that like, look, everyone's making money doing business and doing these things. People have done other cool things. And I just wanted to ask, like, hey, did you do anything more meaningful than investing in yourself? Uh, people starting a charity, uh, getting married, paying for their wedding, uh, you know, I talked about uh, Doggy G, he did the same thing, he turned his life around. Uh, Yassin was able to travel a lot, He's, uh, he calls himself a, what is it, a nomad. He's seen like almost every country that's out there in the world, he's hiked somewhere weird, like he's done it all. He's bought a house, uh, Big Quark has bought a car, started regular charity donations, uh, bought his uh, Uranium 23.8, he's bought his house, uh, he's bought his parents a car, and just recently he, uh, I, he said he was investing in a business and that business has actually came up and it's running uh, for his parents as well. Uh, bought their parents ho uh, a house, saving for college, bought a lot of pizza, and just name it there is. But this is one of my favorite stories because these two brothers, uh, they came out of India and they both were, one of them was in school, one of them was in IT, and they both helped their parents retire. And not only retire their parents, so one of them, I, I don't remember their names, I haven't seen them in years, but. The younger one goes to college, and they both find, about, find out what bug bounties are. Uh, he drops out of college to do bug bounties full time, and then they're supporting their family and each other. And then the brother quits his job and joins them, and they full time do bug bounties out of India. And they really entirely just uh, retired their parents and bought them a home. And uh, anything that they could have done probably in the next 10, 15 years, they would have been able to do it in a few years uh, by just doing bug bounties. And my uh, favorite one is actually, hosted a conference, very focused on bug bounties, and we ended up raising uh, $52,000 and donated every single dollar of it to Leukemia Lymphoma, Lymphoma Society. And I wanna say a large majority of the donations, at least half of them, came directly from the bug bounty hunters that were mentioned in the story, and the other half was from corporate sponsorships and people that had a bug bounty program. And it all went to a good cause and a good research. All right, now let's bring it full circle. I think I have like five more minutes to finish this. Uh, I'm gonna go through this very quickly so there's time for a QA. Uh, I talked to a lot of people. I didn't talk about myself. I wanna keep that for the ending to kind of show you uh, why I told you all the stuff that I've did. Um, so, would you like to hear my story? Yeah. Okay, cool, because the next slide was gonna say too bad if you said no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, so I'm Nahamsek. Like I mentioned, I, I go by Nahamsek online. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I've, I'm also Hacker One Elite. I've hacked all these different companies, talked about it a little bit. I barely knew anything about the web in college. I've done hacking, but it was like copy-pasting payloads. Didn't know what it did really. I just knew XSS existed. Um, I spent a lot of my time in college in digital marketing advertisement, and I wanted to, I've gone from every profile that I've mentioned, from the moonlight to careerist, uh, to the person that wanted to learn, the learner, I've done all of them, and I've created some business because of bug bounties. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to. So I originally got my first real engineering job at Hulu because I found a vulnerability in one of their assets, submitted it to them. A year later exactly, I interviewed for a position uh, and I worked for them for nine months, helped them build a bug bounty program. And then I wasn't a big fan of Hacker One. I criticized the crap out of the company uh, on Twitter for a while and then they killed me with kindness, brought me over to their office and I ended up being an intern there. I worked on the triage team, I moved up to the customer success, you name it, and towards the end, I ended up working as the head of hacker education for them, and now I'm the VP of a brand new startup. 
but I realized that I really enjoyed hacking, but I want to have an impact on people's lives. I want to do more than that. I wanted to be able to share my story with other people. Uh, I started creating content. So I have a YouTube channel and Twitch. Uh, I pretty much let people look over my shoulder so they can learn how to hack. And I know a handful of people that have reached out to me and I'm like, hey, I watched your streams a couple of months. I got my first pen testing job. I have a guy out of, uh, I want to say New York. He was, also, he was a cook for a fast food chain. Every Sunday he would watch my streams as he's working. And then within six months he messaged me saying uh, he got his first pen test gig that went from $12 an hour to $45 an hour. Uh, he was working hourly. And then he also messaged me not too long ago. He said, I just got my full-time job and I'm making the most amount of money I've ever made in my life because I watch people do things and I put in the time and effort to get out of what I was doing already. Um, but that wasn't enough for me. I wanted to do more. I wanted to get into public speaking. So I started going to conferences. I've talked at a handful of B-size conferences, AppSec, uh, ShellCon. I've uh, had the pleasure to work at, where I work with DEF CON. I help with organizing Red Team Village and AppSec Village now. So I wanted to get really get out there and do more. Um, when conferences were shut down in during the pandemic, I was really bummed that I couldn't go to any conferences. I try to go to every conference I can. Um, I would pretty much say n never say no to a conference I, unless I really can't go to it. Uh, so I started the two conferences, VersaCon, which we did in 2020. Uh, unfortunately for COVID, it was literally where every, the entire world got shut down and there was nothing happening that weekend. VersaCon was planned for that weekend and everybody came and watched it, which helped out. And I also created NahamCon, which NahamCon actually uh, turned three this year. I just did. Uh, our last edition last month, and we had 9,000 people playing our CTF across 3,000 teams, and companies were you know, helping us put it together, and some of the people that I showed, example, Shabs, ZLZ, they were also speakers uh, at the conference. What I'm trying to get to is that everything that I've mentioned in the past couple of minutes that I've done was purely because people on the internet were brave enough to trust other people on the internet to find bugs in their assets and their, you know, in their uh, products and pay them. So all of this said, if you want to get into bug bounties, it's not late. It doesn't have to be bug bounties alone. It could be anything you want to do. It could be anything with hacking. Again, the, the good thing with the community in hacking is that you could do anything you want. You could, you could be anywhere you want in your life. It doesn't matter. You can get started today. Some of the people that I've shown, they were in the 30s, 40s. I know people that are in their 50s are still getting started. So it's never too late to get started with this. Uh, whether you want to get into red teaming, you want to get your first certificate, uh, you want to do bug bounties, hacking, whatever that is. So quick bug bounty resources. Uh, I showed these three books. Uh, the two are the same. I would definitely uh, recommend getting the last two uh, for bug bounties specifically. They cover a lot of stuff that you need to know. Um, I know there's two other people that I have from the same publishers that have books downstairs. Also highly recommend them. Uh, they touch on things that you can use for bug bounty hunting as well. But those two were the ones that really stood out to me. Uh, and I can actually talk about them. There are three uh, different websites you can go to. The first one is called Hacker 101. It's a platform owned by Hacker One. They have a CTF. You go do the CTF on their platform. Uh, if you solve enough CTF levels, they give you an invite to a private program where you can make money and you can start building your resume with them and get invited to more programs. Uh, WebSec Academy by Portswigger, incredible. I highly recommend it. Uh, it teaches you how to use Burp Suite and also teaches you a lot of good stuff for hacking. And then HackerOne.com slash activity. You can see other people's research that have been publicly disclosed on HackerOne. Uh, Bug Bounty Hunter that I talked about. Pentester Lab is a great resource. I think it's about $14 a month. Uh, if you, if you want to have a structured course, try Udemy. I don't recommend it, even though I have a course myself. I still don't recommend Udemy to you. Uh, stick to one of the other platforms like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, Pentester Lab, and Bug Bounty Hunter. And the reason why I don't recommend Udemy is you learn things in theory. If you need that, great. Go sign up for a Udemy course. But the hands-on things are what teaches you the most, uh, especially with Try Hack Me. They have rooms and they have paths that you can learn to build up your skill set. So if you know nothing about cybersecurity, they have a prerequisite class that you can take. And then it tells you, now that you have done this, do the basics of networking, basics of hacking, web app, and you can just keep going down those rooms. Uh, Twitter is a great resource. I dropped a lot of names on there. Honestly, go on, uh, if you're shy, you don't want to tweet, go on Twitter and follow a lot of people. Uh, Jason Haddix is a good example. He does threads every day about how to do X, Y, and Z. It's a new one every day. Uh, YouTube, there is no shortage of content creators nowadays. You can get a ton of different people creating content to learn. And then go on GitHub. GitHub has a lot of uh, GitHub pages that have a lot of resources in them. And last but not least, if you did enjoy the stories that I told you, every Sunday I mentioned I do a stream. I bring on some of these top hackers or people that have done something in the community that have a story they want to tell. 
I interview them almost every Sunday on Twitch, and you can come hear more about them and learn hands-on from them. And I think that's all I have. Thank you for listening. Is that expected to share? You want to take some questions? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to. If anybody has any questions, I will run the mic to you. Ah, I see one. Uh, hi, that, that was really interesting. Um, my, my question is, do you think bounties, are bounties going up or are they going down? Because it seems like as more people get plugged into this, it'll be a race to the bottom. So maybe there won't be these career paths because bounties will just be lower. Uh, on the other hand, as more companies start programs, then we have to attract hackers, so we have to like pay commensurate bounties. So which way do you think it's going? From what I have seen, it's going up more, just like you mentioned. Just like there's more hackers coming up, there are more companies being open to doing bug bounties. Apple would never pay for a web app vulnerability. They just started doing that a few years ago. Um, I think it's going up. As, as much as there's more hackers coming, there's also more programs being launched. Uh, and I've seen the bounty amounts go higher and higher and higher and higher. I know they're getting harder and harder to find, but also the money you're getting, the average money you're getting paid is becoming higher and higher from some of these companies. Uh, I think Verizon Media went from like average of 10K for a critical, right now they pay 20, $25,000. So that average has gone higher and higher uh, as we, you know, more companies come through. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, so for a beginner, do you think it's better to do CTFs or start to try to find bugs and programs or just do a mix of both? A mix of both. I would say definitely try, you know, Pentester Lab, Hack the Box. They're, uh, unfortunately, they're not free. They cost a little bit of money. But it's not, a, you know, it's, it's not as expensive as OSCP. You're paying 20 bucks a month. Depending on how much time you spend, you can learn a lot. And I would honestly say go hack on uh, vuln disclosure programs. Those are companies that don't pay. They just accept your vulnerabilities. A lot of these top hackers aren't going to waste their time on those. And I mean waste because they want to make money. But I personally have, that's what I started as well. I went on these, you know, DOD has a program that's free, GM, IBM, they all have programs they can go hack on and learn. I would say focus on those until you have a methodology of how you look for bugs and then you can go do a bug bounty. Because this way you can get experience on how, how, how do I look for XSS? What is recon? What is this? A lot of the top hackers aren't going to spend time on these free programs because they're not going to make money from it. So it's a really, really good place to go do these CTFs, learn specific things, and take that knowledge and hack on these programs like DOD and find bugs on them. Uh, does it seem like more companies are starting to offer bug bounty programs? Is there is some type of data that they're seeing companies that offer bug bounties are having less uh, malicious attacks versus companies that don't offer it? I don't think there's ever going to be companies having less malicious attacks, but the question is like, no one's going to stop hacking your company. You know, black hats are going to always going to go after your products. Why not let people do it legally and then they can help you uh, prevent it? I can't say bug bunnies will prevent it in any way, but there has been times that I've seen vulnerabilities come out that could have caused a lot of issues for a particular company. Um, that would have probably not been found uh, through a regular pen test. And these companies are doing multi million dollar pen tests also. Uh, nothing against pen testers, by the way. I'm just saying, like, with people that are working as freelancers, they're not getting paid by the hour. They have to get their return for their time. So they go for the maximum impact versus looking for, you know, OAS top 10 and that sort of stuff. If you're a pen tester, please don't come after me. It's, they're both great things to do. It's just, it's different. Hi, I, I was just curious, how often is it that you have to uh, haggle over the severity um, when you do find a bug uh, in order to get a bounty that uh, you, know, you deserve? Uh, for me personally, my experience, it's not a lot. It's, it's happened a few times. It depends on the company first. And also, as a hacker, I get way excited. I'm like, this has got to be a critical the moment I find it. And then the more and more they explain, it makes sense. There's been times when I've offered, like, hey, can we go on a phone call? where I can explain to you why I think it's a critical vuln versus a, you know, a high. But also we have CVSS. Uh, I know it's not the best tool to use out there, but with CVSS you can calculate and say why it's a critical. And I would break down why I think you know, the, the confidentiality and integrity are high because of these reasons. So I really try in my reports, if I know a company has never worked with me in the past, or I feel like I'm not gonna get paid, 
I will try and break down why I think it's you know more impact than they can tell. But also sometimes these companies don't know their own products. You know, the engineer just started last month. They have no idea what this asset does. So explaining those things has helped, but it still happens. You just have to be able to get, uh, have uh, given the benefit of the doubt, uh, go in with good intent, and usually I want to say nine out of ten times I've worked with me. All right, uh, another hand for Ben. That's our keynote.